Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel Tech with Marco. I'm Marco and I'm a software developer and a DevOps engineer. And in today's video, I'd like to talk about the topic security. As you can imagine, security is quite important in your daily life or just in general with digital communications. And I had the thought this topic is still not well known in the general public, but it's still pretty important or at least more people should be aware of that. And my goal with the video is to uh, spread the word about security and uh, build awareness about how important it is and how easy it is actually to be more secure in your daily life. And therefore I'd like to introduce you to a tool which is called a Cryptomator. A Cryptomator is a tool which helps you to encrypt your data easily on your local machine. And this tool has apps available for uh, your MacBook, for Linux, for Windows, for Android and for iOS. So you can easily use it on like nearly every device you are using in your daily life. So buckle up, grab a glass of water and uh, join my tutorial. So let's have a look at the Cryptomator website. So at first you need the program to download and therefore I link the Cryptomator website in the description and there you can click download and download it for your preferred platform. I already have it installed on my MacBook so I'm gonna start Cryptomator now. As you can see it's a quite simple UI here and on the left side we see our stored vaults which I already created here in this case my vault but for the demonstration purpose I'm going to add another vault and I click here create new vault name it uh, YouTube vault for example click next and then it shows me for example OneDrive or iCloud Drive or I can choose a custom location on my uh, MacBook here and I choose a custom location here for this demonstration purpose, uh, which is just my home folder. And there a new folder will be created, which is called YouTube Vault. And uh, I click next, I can enter a password, YouTube Vault. Uh, it's just saying me it's just, yeah, no, it's a strong password. Make sure that this password is uh, matching and you can remember the password or just note it down in your favorite um, password manager and in the next step Cryptomator is asking you if you want uh, a recovery key for your vault so in any case you're losing your password or you can't remember it you get a specific recovery key with which you are then able to access your uh, encrypted data and yes please uh, better safe than sorry because I might forget the password and now I'm creating a vault so in this screen Cryptomatter shows me now my recovery key and uh, make sure to note that one down. I just copied that one here, open a text document, uh, store it there and uh, yeah, just to access it later for demonstration. So make sure to store that recovery key in some safe place, for example, print it on a paper and put it in a secure place or also put it in a password manager of your choice. And yeah, now I click next and uh, yeah, I just created a vault and I just click done. So let's see how this uh, folder looks like now. And I'm here in my home folder. At the bottom you see YouTube Vault. I'm opening that one here. And there we can see I just got a like random D folder and there's just some randomly encrypted data. Uh, that's just the basic starting data Cryptometer is automatically generating for you. And we see an important uh, manual file here. Uh, which is just saying basically remember the password and stuff like that but now we can open the vault and i click unlock here now enter my uh, password i chose for this vault click unlock and now it's saying uh, the unlock was successful and now i click review the drive and yeah, I got the welcome file in the vault. So I just now have a extra volume mounted on my MacBook, which is called YouTube Vault. And I can access this data, which is in this vault. So let's test and uh, add a file to the vault. So I'm actually saving for demonstration purposes, the recovery key in my vault. And I press save. I use the YouTube vault and name it re recovery key. And now we can see we got a recovery key file stored in here. And now you can see there was another file added to the vault. So I copy this key and add another copy for that. And now you can see in comparison like two folders, the left side of the folder is what people 
who do not have the password for the vault can see. And on the right side, this is the unencrypted data you can see on your local machine with the um, vault opened with your password. And now the big thing comes into play. So you can now uh, synchronize this vault into any public cloud. So this makes you able to uh, upload private gibberish data for everybody out there. And for you, you can access it with your uh, password, which you chose. And the cool thing is you can also access these files on your Android or your iOS device. Uh, I think CryptoMatter charges you like 10 bucks for it. So it's not that much, but it's worth it, I would say. I bought it in a, a sale, I guess, for five euros. I just was lucky at that time. And for this vault to synchronize, you either need the uh, Google Drive Sync Helper or the OneDrive Sync Helper or Nextcloud, or you can store it in an Amazon S3 bucket. So there are thousands of possibilities, but the key point here is that you are sure that your data cannot be accessed by anybody else who does not have your password for the vault. Yeah, this gives me a really good feeling about synchronizing my data into public cloud storages. I store there like important um, th documents or some files I do not want to share with others. And I would say this even makes sense if you do not synchronize your data into any cloud, but you can uh, be sure like if your notebook is lost or people get access to it by accident or you leave it unlocked by accident in a cafe and people go to your computer and want to read data um, then you can store all your important information into this vault and uh, yeah just make sure that you don't leave it unlocked open all the time and yeah i think there are settings for that that uh, they will be locked after a certain amount of time but we can uh, skim through the settings here. So in general uh, preference, we have launch CryptoMeta on system start, hide window when starting CryptoMeta, lock vaults automatically when quitting application. Yeah, that is actually a nice setting. Yeah, you can change the interface a little bit, virtual drive. And oh, there's a pretty nice or pretty important setting. So you can choose the volume type and um, you can either choose automatic or if you have the extension MacFuse installed, then I would recommend uh, using the MacFuse extension because this, I don't know like how it's gonna be better, but CryptoMeter recommends you at, at least for macOS to use the MacFuse uh, extension to mount the vault into your computer. I'm not quite sure how this is uh, different, but I had the problem when I was syncing my data to OneDrive with, without the MacFuse extension. Uh, then it did not work quite well. So there were some synchronization problems, but with the MacFuse extension, it worked out of the box like for for good. And I make sure to, to link the MacFuse extension in the description. And yeah, you can choose if you want to use it or not, just test it. If it works for you, then you don't have to use it. But if it doesn't work, I would definitely recommend try to use uh, MacFuse. Yeah, so there are also uh, updates, checkbox uh, for updating automatically. Uh, you can support them with a donation, for example, at their GitHub uh, repository. Ah, yeah, and the cool thing is it is open source. So CryptoMator is uh, developed open source and you can see the source code, uh, skim through it, try to understand how it works or um, yeah, see if there are issues. And I supported that in buying the uh, Android and the iOS app for my iPad. And yeah, now we can um, lock the vault here again and you can see the um, unlocked finder window just closed because it was unmounted and I can't access it anymore. So there's no vault in here left. And I just see the gibberish data here for everybody. For example, if I open that with a text editor, I just see random data. Now at the bottom right, we, s we see the vault options and there we can set the lock idle for example, 30 minutes. So if we don't use the vault for 30 minutes, it's getting locked automatically. This is actually kind of a nice setting. And uh, we can also unlock the vault when we start CryptoMator. So it's getting into a kind of routine. And uh, there are some mounting options, uh, read only and command mount flex. Uh, you can check the uh, documentation of CryptoMator, what exactly these settings mean. I haven't uh, modified them and it works pretty well for me. So I actually don't, shouldn't worry about it. And of course you can uh, change the password uh, display your recovery key, but therefore you need your password. 
And in case now you're uh, losing your password and you don't know um, where it is or can't remember it, you can change uh, or reset the password here with your recovery key. And yeah, for that I have to unlock the vault again uh, because I stored it in there and uh, closed the window. Unlock successful, review the drive. I'm opening the recovery key here. Copy the key, unlock the file. And now I'm opening the vault options, I'll reset the password. And yeah, now it's saying me the recovery key is correct. If I just delete a letter, it's saying me the recovery key is not valid. So make sure that uh, yeah you have access to your recovery key. So I can click next and I can enter a new password. YouTube Vault 2. YouTube Vault 2. Close. So easy as that. Now I changed the password and the recovery key stays the same. Now let's check if the old password works. And yes, yeah, as you can see, it does not work. But with the new password, the number two, it unlocks again. So this is pretty amazing and it's so easy to use the tool. And I would definitely recommend checking that out for macOS or for the desktop application, it's free. And if you wanna access this data on mobile applications, then, uh, yeah, as I said, it costs 10 bucks. It's definitely worth it to invest the money uh, because for the security sake. And yeah, if you have any questions about this or any thoughts you want to share about data security, uh, feel free to leave a comment. I'd be happy to answer and uh, yeah, catch you guys in the next video. Bye.